Hey y'all, hi. I am Hannah, and today I have duped the vibes of the Natasha Denona My Dream eyeshadow palette onto my eyes. Duping the vibes is a phrase that I came up with way back in 2018 when I was on a year-long no-buy for makeup. I love makeup. I quit buying it for an entire year along with a bunch of other things. And during that year, a bunch of new eyeshadow palettes were released that I really wanted to buy because I really loved the potential that they offered to do beautiful and new to me eye looks. And one night in the throes of desperation, feeling like I would just absolutely lose my mind if I couldn't buy whatever new eyeshadow palette had just launched that I couldn't buy because I was on a no buy year. In the throes of desperation, I pulled out all of the eyeshadow palettes that I did have. And I looked at a picture of the newly released palette. And I said to myself, if I did own this palette, if I did buy it and it had just arrived, which eyeshadow would I use first? Like what would I actually do with it. And then eyeshadow by eyeshadow, I went through the creation of the eye look that I would have created with that palette. I just did it with the next best thing in every case in the eyeshadow collection that I already had. And I found it to be incredibly gratifying, not because I think that I ended up looking exactly the same way that I would look if I owned that eyeshadow palette, because there were nuances of color and texture that I couldn't exactly match. But what I learned was that in duping the vibes rather than duping the palette, I engaged in the aspect of the palette that I think was the thing I was craving the most, which was the creative stimulation that I thought that it would give me because of the way that it combined certain colors with each other. So I find it really useful, this process, and I like to go through it every time an eyeshadow palette is released that is intriguing in some way, but that I don't want want to buy for some reason. In this case, the Natasha Denona My Dream eyeshadow palette intrigues me because I'm a big fan of Natasha Denona. I've had a handful of palettes. I generally love the way that she puts colors together, and I'm always sitting up and taking notice when she releases a new palette. However, the My Dream eyeshadow palette is not really my dream. I don't really get it. I don't get why people are into it and I don't want it. So I thought it'd be an interesting experience to dupe the vibes of this palette kind of as a way of going behind the scenes of it, getting into the way the colors relate to each other so that I can understand it better, like understand why it's flying off the shelves, understand what Natasha Denona was getting at when she put these colors together in this way. And I'm hoping, and this is the reason that I'm filming this as a video, instead of just doing it by myself at my vanity. I'm hoping that watching me go through this process will kind of dismantle the palette a little bit for some of you, because I know this is an expensive palette. It's the kind of thing that people pine away over and agonize over whether or not they should buy. By breaking down the color story and sort of turning the fantasy into reality, hopefully I can help you make a really clear-headed decision about whether or not it's something that you want. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. I'm very interested in the relationship between aesthetics and consumerism. Most of my videos explore that relationship in some way. If you enjoy this, I hope that you will subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, here we are, ready to go, ready to dupe the vibes. Actually, the first thing that I'm going to do is prime my eyes, I forgot to do it. Okay, and now I will look at the palette, take a good hard look at it, pretend it's here, and kind of ask myself, what is it about it? What is it about it? What's distinctive? What's making me wanna use it? What's the big deal? What's the big idea? I love a true black in a palette, and I've always been intrigued by Natasha Denona's blackest black. So that is a vote in favor of this palette to me. I think that it would be an exciting thing to acquire at some point. But I have a couple of really good black eyeshadows scattered among my eyeshadow palette collection, so that's definitely not the thing that's making this palette stand apart to me or making it distinctive, because a blackest black is a blackest black after all. I also really love a deep murky plum color, and it's cool that that's one of the dark eyeshadows in here, one of the dark mattes. But again, I have a couple of eyeshadows 
shadows that color scattered throughout my collection. I actually feel like I might be more prone, well, actually realistically looking at this palette, thinking about the looks that I would do, I would probably use that dark eggplant and the blackest black nine times out of 10. So that's kind of what stands out to me first. What a boring thing to have jump out of a palette, a matte eggplant and a matte black. Wow, <laughs> my dream. For real though, the thing, the eyeshadow that is the one in this palette is of course Vision. It looks like a multi-chrome that shifts from like pinky red through to sort of a murky green. It looks intriguing. It looks special. It looks grungy. It looks right up my alley. And that is absolutely the first thing that I would touch if I had this palette in my hands. So let's see what I have. Okay. I have Cleona Kiln. Cleona is an independent makeup brand. They make these beautiful jeweled multi-chromes. This is a really smooth, extremely reflective, color-shifting multi-chrome that looks like it has all of the same colors as Vision. Multi-chromes are notoriously difficult to capture on camera, especially in glamour lighting like this, where we're getting pretty even light from all angles. I think what we're really losing on camera here, we're getting the red, right? You're like getting that magenta but you're losing the sort of grungy, almost chartreuse forest green flip that it has. I can see it from where I'm sitting. Like when I look at the side of my finger here, basically the whole thing looks chartreuse, but I don't know if I'll be able to show it to you. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of a lost cause. However, this is a very high voltage version of the kind of thing that I think Natasha Denona has put here in her palette. So I'm going to start with it. Actually, as long as it's not my finger. I'm just going to put it all over both of my lids and buff it out and use that as the base of the look. It's definitely the most compelling thing about this palette, except for the black, the matte black. One of the cool things about these is that the base of the multi-chrome is like a, a murky black shadow. So when you buff them out, it pulls out that base, that black eyeshadow, and you get something really smoky. To really light up that multi-chrome at the center of my lids, I'll probably want to tap on a little layer at the end after everything's done. But for for now, I think that's a good foundation. I'm also gonna put that same eyeshadow. This is it. I didn't give you a close-up before. Oh, there you can kind of see the shift. It's a little bit darker in person. It's not just yellow. It also goes kind of like to a dark green, but you can kind of see it. I'm gonna put it on my lower lash line as well because again, that black kind of ashy medium, it makes a really beautiful buffed out lower lash line. Oh my gosh, I love this eyeshadow so much. I'm tempted to just keep going and do like a one and done look with it, build it up in the outer corner. But I feel like that wouldn't be fair to Natasha. We have to put some of the other colors in. And let's actually start with that purple matte. So I'm going to use Cylon from the Kaleidos and Agnelic Anique Feast Club Nebula palette, which is maybe a little bit more purple than Aspiration, but it'll definitely do what needs to be done. And it's still very much in the spirit of the palette, right? So it's maybe a little bit more purple than that exact eggplant purple that we're seeing in that exact matte, but it's very much the color of a bunch of the other eyeshadows in the palette. And remember, we're just duping the vibes, right? We're just, we're after what this palette is after, but in our own way. Wow, I feel like this is already very my dream, like very my dream vibes. I'm really feeling like my dream is to be able to create this eye look without buying a new Natasha Denona palette. Okay, wow. I'm so pleased with how this is evolving that nothing else in the palette is alluring me. Like I'm only interested in this multi-chrome, these dark mattes. I'm actually not interested in any of the other mattes, not just today for this look, but across the board as a rule. I'm not interested in those pale peachy mattes. The pale taupe, I mean, it's like a buff. It's okay. I just don't really use that kind of thing. And I do like the terracotta, but again, it's a little bit too pale for me. I, I'm interested in these super saturated colors. The dark purple metallics, I would just rather have this. You know what I mean? I'd rather have something grungy and interesting than those just straight up flat purple metallics. I just, I don't think I would ever reach for them when there's something like this on offer, which is to say that I would be using Vision, Aspiration, and Blackest Black over and over and over again and ignoring all of the other ones, which is kind of what I did in the gold palette. 
that's how I ended up using the gold palette. You can see like my favorite four or five shades have been used intensively and almost all of the other shades are almost completely untouched. And I feel like that would be the destiny of this palette in my life. The other shades that do interest me are Thrill and Spontaneous because speaking of the gold palette, I feel like those shades are kind of like pink versions of Kava and Sparks. These like sheer, very reflective, especially Thrill, it looks like it could be made up of those really shiny looking particulate matter micas suspended in some sort of clear medium and I love using that kind of eyeshadow to put all over my brow bone and I would love to use something like that on this look to soften the edge of the smoke that I've smoked out. But instead of using Sparks or Kava, I am going to use the rose gold and the gold from Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction because I feel like color wise those are more aligned the vibes in Natasha Denona My Dream. So I'm going to start with the rose gold kind of on my inner corner and then I'm going to use a sheer gold on my brush all over my brow bones. Very pleased, very pleased with the, how this has come together. And I do feel like I'm seeing the potential in the My Dream palette. I like this, okay? If it's going to be this kind of sort of magenta leaning purple, let it be this, you know? I definitely need a little bit of eyeliner. Muse Beauty Pro sent me these, the new Isom double-ended eyeliners, which if they're anything like the lip liners, I'm sure are going to be amazing. I'm trying to pick a My Dreamy type one. Yeah, this one, it's got dark purple on one side and like shiny pink on the other. I'm going to use the dark purple side. Oh my gosh, purple eyeliner on green or green leaning eyes. That's the ticket. That's how you make your green eyes look greener. Okay, that's it. My goodness, it's my dream. My dream that I didn't even know I had. I'm going to clean up this tiny bit of fallout. I just have a couple of crumbs of eyeshadow on my face, put on mascara, and then I'll give you a close up and we'll discuss. All right, here I am. I'm back. I used the Isom mascara as well, which I don't know, it's growing on me. It's a great all-purpose mascara. Very dependable, very down the middle. I cleaned up a little bit of fallout and on my lips, I'm wearing the VB Beauty Posh Lipstick in Girl. I felt like it was kind of Natasha Denona, my dream collection vibes. And here's what I have to say, kind of an interesting takeaway from this for me. I am not that into this shade of purple, this sort of like purple leaning pink. And because it has such a strong presence in this palette and there are those pink mattes, so especially Instinct, that really pink leaning purple, and then the fact that Edgy is such a plain straight up plum that I think also kind of has those pink undertones and it could easily have those pink undertones pulled out of it. And then there are these matte pinks and there's Risk, which leans very pink. Because of that, and then because the palette has a couple of other strikes against it, for me in practical use that I haven't mentioned yet. One is that Invention, which is a beautiful bright gold that clearly leans really orange. It's one of those like yellow golds and I just know myself, I don't end up using them as evidenced by the fact that I barely touched the really, really orangey yellow gold in the gold palette. Invention looks like it's just a tiny bit, maybe a tiny bit more champagne, maybe has a tiny bit of a peach flip, but I don't like any of those versions of this either. So there are a couple shades in this palette that I think are designed to be like major draws. Instinct, invention, vision. Instinct and invention are turnoffs to me. Like I wouldn't use them if I had the palette. And because of that, I just felt like it was a no as soon as I saw it. And I've been feeling like it was a total no ever since then. And I was kind of expecting to sit down to dupe the vibes and to look at the palette and be like, there's really nothing here that sparks my creativity. I was expecting to say, Serenity is a little bit too pale of a purplish taupe for me. Babies actually looks really pretty. And I was expecting to sort of look at the palette and, and say, you know, I could see myself putting babies all over my lid as sort of like a nuanced, rosy, taupey, shimmery shade, and then making it smoky with one of these dark mattes. But that's sort of all that I could see myself ever doing. So not only is that a very basic look or relatively basic look, but I could so easily do that with the eyeshadows that I already have. 
However, what happened was that I ended up with this quite dynamic look that is both very, very in my wheelhouse. The fact that it's sort of smudgy, really smoky, grungy, shiny all the way up to the brows, a little bit messy looking, you know, like maybe I cried a little bit and rubbed my eye. All of that is what I love to do. But it also is distinctly plummy purple. It is very Natasha Denona, my dream collection vibes. Like it's very that. It's kind of showed me. Oh, and I love it. <laughs> and I really, really love it. Like, I, I want to do this again tomorrow. Like, it's making me want to replicate it. It's making me want to build a little version of this that just has the shadows that I will use and to keep it on my vanity and to, like, lean into this as we go into fall because I just really am surprised but you really like it. So it's kind of shown me what it is that people are seeing in this palette, basically. And I realized by duping the vibes that I understand why people are buying it, but it's also shown me that I definitely don't need to buy it because as I've always known since it was first released, I think slightly more than half these shades are just not shades that I'll use very much and don't really feed into my dream of what I might do with this. But what is there that I like, the shades that do work with my dream, they're actually much more dynamic and inspiring than I thought that they were going to be. So I can see it a little bit, okay, that I maybe spoke too soon when I was like, this is is ugly, which I didn't say out loud, but I said that to myself. I was like, why are we putting these colors together? Why is it ugly and boring at the same time? And why is everyone so excited about it? I mean, I wasn't wrong. I'm not wrong about the fact that I wouldn't use like invention and instinct and serenity and unity and probably not really edgy or nurture or familia and spontaneous. I would probably eschew in favor of using thrill or carpe diem. I wouldn't use it either. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. Five, five of these eyeshadows that I would be wanting to use if I owned this palette. But where I did go wrong was in thinking that I wouldn't be able to do anything, that there's nothing that interesting about those shadows that I do like in here, that I wouldn't be able to get very interesting of a look or that I wouldn't particularly be vibing with the look that I would get from them. But I am very much vibing with the look that I would get from them. Uh, I just don't need them <laughs> in order to get it, which is what duping the vibes is all about. Let me know what you think. I feel like a lot of you have bought this palette. I don't know if that's true. I'm just basing it on how many people I've seen posting about it and writing comments about it. It feels to me like this was a hit, but that it was a hit that kind of completely went over my head in terms of the allure until this moment, until I sat down and duped the vibes. So it's just interesting. Usually I dupe the vibes of something I feel like I really want, and then I find out that I don't need it to get the looks that I want, or sometimes I find out that I actually didn't want it as much as I thought I did. I just, I thought the color story looked good, but in practice the looks aren't that exciting. And this is kind of the opposite. The color story doesn't attract me, but in practice, it actually really has something to offer me. It doesn't change my feelings about whether or not I want the palette, but it did show me, again, a thing that I think it's always useful to remember about palettes, which is that the way that the palette looks isn't the way that your eyes are going to look. The color story you're being served in a palette, it's like a separate thing from the way that your eyes will end up looking. Because in almost every case, you're going to leave out colors. You're going to only have certain colors. In this case, for me, that works in favor of the eye look. I just think it looks way better than the palette, but it works the other way around too, right? If sometimes you see a color story and you're like, I just have to own that makeup. And then there's nothing you can do. There's no way in which you could possibly use the palette to make your eyes evocative of that color story because there are just too many colors. They don't translate on the eyes in the same way that they look in the pans. And that's enough makeup theory for the time being. I'll try to link the shadows that I used down below. Most of them are available, but you know that's not the point, right? The point is to see what you can do with what you already own. Even if you don't have shades that are as close to what you think these are supposed to be doing as some of mine were, the chances are you will still end up with something absolutely fierce. I also think that there are are some pretty good chances that you will wade pretty far into the experience of using this palette. If you dupe the vibes, you get in amongst the colors, you start problem solving with the color story, which is a lot of what a palette is about. If you're really feeling tempted by this palette, just try it. Just try it and see what happens. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you for spending this time with me. And I very much hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 